bit more casual. And then we might use some of this to splice it and that kind of yep. stuff. So what was your what was your take on doing something like this? I mean, you're telling your story like crazy these days. I figured it was be just another way to do it. Um, you know what? I kind of agreed to do it because it was you that asked me. Because I think you're pretty cool. And I figured we would have fun talking. <laughs> yeah. You know, I enjoy your company. So that was one of the reasons I did it. And uh, I, was inter- I'm, I was interested to see what you'd come up with. Because I'd watched those videos and I thought... Okay, there's a lot of cool ways of approaching this. I yeah. kind of thought you might have rented a really funky car or something like that. This is okay. Yeah, I just got a suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is okay. I was thinking if I was to do it with you, we could either do it on my Harley or I could do it in one of the trucks. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. And so, I'll, I'll, I'll even bring this yeah, yeah. and do that in a heartbeat. Yeah, we could take a truck out for a little ride. I love that. I have idea. to find a, a firmer mount for the camera so it doesn't bounce around. Yeah, I've got one ordered. Do you? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a straight arm. I got two pieces of feedback from the first one I did. One is the bouncy camera, and the second one is I play with my tongue. So I've been very conscious of oh, really? I keeping know, my yeah. tongue out of the shot. <laughs> you know what? The more I tape myself doing talks and that, there's some words I find that I use a little too much, and it's a, it's, it's a great learning lesson. It was, it really uh, is. I think it was second year university. I was in a communications course, and uh, the professor, I, there's two things I'll always remember from this course. The first one was, I was diagnosed as a non-reader because she asked how many books you've read in the last 12 months outside of like course books. And, you know, I was like, kind of put my hand out. I was like, you know, one maybe. Was, and she's like, well, then you're not a reader. Like this fixed, I'm not a reader. Either. You know, diagno- diagnosis that I'm not a reader. And um, I've probably read over 300 books since that day. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, I just chomp through books. I just wow. read and I listen to books, and it's just something that just you know, it's something that I really need. I just have this unquenchable thirst for, for learning. I would love to read more, but I, one aspect of my personality I still struggle with is distraction, which makes it really difficult to focus when I'm reading a book. So. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I I'm, especially now that I've got uh, two, t- I got twins and a two year old, uh, reading at home has become yeah. very difficult. So I, I've used Audible. <coughs> I'm not sure to use Audible. I love that. Yeah. Audiobooks. Yeah. I think it's amazing. The other thing I did from this talk was I had to do a presentation from this course. I do a presentation, and then the exercise afterwards was to watch the presentation with no sound and listen to it without looking at it, and then write notes and observations around what you noticed and what you want to improve on. And I found that I clapped while I was talking to people, and it's really distracting. (laughs) So I stopped doing that. Well, that's that's a great learning tool. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, like I said, I've been videoing, I've been recording. Well, as you know, the one you listen to. Once I recorded my talks, there was the odd word I used a lot. I thought, why do I? You know, I don't. I didn't even think I used that word in my normal vocabulary. So it's a great way to learn. I love it. Yeah. Okay, so um, you know, serious light, whatever. How do you want to take this one? Um, somebody's growing an organization. You know, they're, they're getting successful, you know, maybe they got 20, 25 people and they're starting to find that, you know, the way they used to do things, you know, by consensus, by, you know, everybody having an opinion and getting around the table, um, is slowing decision making down in a big way. Do you have any words of wisdom for somebody going through that experience on how to keep speed uh, in the organization without, and, and still embrace diversity of opinion? Um... Well, part of it is is granting people uh, responsibility. Number one, up in front of that, is communication. So, before you can hand out responsibility, everyone has to know that they're aware of the direction the company's going. They're aware of the company's values and ethics statement. Values and ethics are big, are really important to me, and they're very important to our company. And, and we have a value statement that really most employees can grab onto when they go to make a decision and realize whether the decision they're making is in line with our values or not. So number one, is it in line with the company's values? And secondly, do they understand the direction the company's going and where they're heading so they know if the the decision they're about to make on a daily basis or even on an hourly basis is heading towards the right direction? And three, have they, you know, what level of responsibility and decision making have they been given because obviously farther up the ladder there's greater uh, 
uh, level of responsibility and decision making being given. But uh, I think they have to know the direction of the company and they have to know the values and ethics so they don't cross the line from that standpoint. And if any of our employees today make a decision at our company based on those two things, it could still be the wrong decision. But they're not going to be reprimanded for making it if they've thought about values and ethics and they've heard me share or someone else in a leadership role share the direction we're going they've heard that at a meeting or somewhere like that then uh, or at a company event and they've made a decision based on those two things they won't be reprimanded. cool yeah clarity creates speed yeah i, but I like that it you know, you, you don't want to create anything that's too cumbersome that slows things down because there isn't time today. That's what I mean. There's no time for that today. And I, and especially in, you know, yeah, 2017, the world is just changing so we fast. Have, we have to be nimble enough that we can we can make changes in a very, up to, you know, a certain level of changes, right? There's some corporate changes that are left to ownership. It just is what it is. And, you know, but I've had to improve my decision-making skills as well. I was, I used to think things out to death and it took too long I had to improve that because I had to, I had to keep up myself I had to set an example that uh, you know and sometimes you make the decision and okay we're gonna, whether we're gonna make a decision based on all the material we have available to us right now and uh, that's and we're gonna go with it and I've made some really lousy decisions in my life but when I look back on the the information that was available to me at the time I made them I'd probably make the same one today right you know, today it's easy to look back and say, well, that was dumb. Hindsight's sweet. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, based on the information. So, values and ethics, just, you know, just have that everywhere, posted everywhere, have everybody believing it. And uh, to me, that's probably number one. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And then yeah. building a ton of clarity around it. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So, what do you do for yeah. fun? I do for fun. I love fishing. I love riding my Harley. I enjoy that. I've seen a huge portion of the uh, United States from the seat of my bike, and I want to see more of it. Um, Where do you go fishing? You know, I do most of the French River pickerel up along that, that corridor, and I do like uh, fishing around the Bancroft area. And I'm going out to Manitoba in May this year to try pike fishing out there, but... Uh, yeah, I haven't done any deep sea fishing yet. It's mostly or no salt water. It's all been fresh water. But uh, I, I only started doing that five years ago. When you got some spare time. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody invited me fishing, and I got hooked on it. Oh, because no pun intended. Because more is better. More yeah. is better. You know. Um, I don't do like I said nothing in moderation. So. So I'll probably spend a fair bit of time doing some fishing and. I kind of took up golf a year ago as well, and I went overboard on that till I <laughs> tore, tore my super spinatus tenant. How do you go overboard last on year golf? Playing, well, I, you know what? They took me out. I, I went out for a weekend of golf. I had to buy two golf shirts. I didn't even own golf shirts. <laughs> two months later, I'd played 25 games wow. in two months. I mean, there's addictive uh, yeah, personality, addictive. right? Yeah, it's more or better. Yeah, so, uh, so anyhow, they're all fairly healthy sports. You're I not, shouldn't you're say not, healthy. They're not. They're not that risk. At risk yeah, it's yet. not like you're doing competitive smoking. No, not yet. <laughs> not, not yet. <laughs> but I would be a winner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So good. Anyhow, thank I you, Rob. I really fun. appreciate yeah, this. Yeah, thank you so much for good doing this. You, man. God yeah. bless. Yeah. It's great Thanks. to see you. Um, so.